which means U.S. Handball will send to you eye guards and handballs enough for every student in your class. Okay, so that helps your school district. And all of a sudden they say, well, I don't know if I want to teach handball. It's not going to cost you anything. Boy, I want to teach handball. <laughs> okay, so we also have available to you, and I forgot to do it right now, but available to you uh, a link on our website to your lesson plans. When you break out into the real world and start teaching, you have to start writing lesson plans for whatever sports you wind up teaching. We've done that work for you. We've broken it down, okay, lesson one, lesson two, all the way to lesson whatever. So we've broken that down for you. Obviously, you're gonna probably um, uh, work it to however it works best for you, okay? So that's kind of the, 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 the gist of what we did this morning. What I'd like to do, if you did not attend this morning, Joel will go over those skills with you. In the meantime, Joel, can I have that one handball? Connie will actually probably need those other balls and all the eye guards. Okay. Right there. Um, all that? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, what we're going to do here, we call this the batting, batting tee drill. Any baseball, softball players here? You go to the batting cages? Batting cages kind of grooves a nice, sweet fastball in there, right at hip height, right at the right speed. Nothing at all like a game. <laughs> but you like to groove your swing. This next drill I'm giving, gonna give you is gonna be drilling your swing. Swing. Joel, great. Right. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna put you to work. Alright, Joel is gonna throw the ball to the wall. I'm gonna be standing here like this. Go ahead. I move back, I stop, let the ball come to me, and I hit it. Okay? It's kind of like what's called hammering a nail. If I'm hammering a nail into the wall, I don't just go like this, do I? I bring the hammer back to hit it, okay? It's the same with putting the handball. In order to hit the handball, I go back, I stop, and then I move forward. Now, I know that today all of you are just going to be trying to catch up with the ball. So I'm not asking for you to be able to do this. I'm just telling you what it is. I realize the first time you've ever played, it's going to be, I'm just trying to get to the ball, okay? But that drill right there is something that we'll do a little bit of before, before we break into the game. Call the batting tree drill, and it's a lot like hammering a nail. Bring the hammer back and hit the ball. Bring the hammer back and hit the ball. And then what we're going to do after that, we're going to break into a game that I call wheel, okay? Let's have everybody line up. Uh, On this black line, all the way down, everybody. All right. All right. Nobody wants to be in front. Okay, so Joel, you, you go there. Okay, you go there. Okay, the moment Joel hits the ball, I'm not going to stand halfway here. The moment Joel hits the ball, I want you to come on the court. Once Joel hits the ball, he's going to get off the court. I'm going to hit the ball. Then you're going to hit the ball. Then you're going to hit the ball. In other words, everybody is going to rotate here like a wheel. Okay? Let's take a look. Go ahead. Okay, come on, come on. Oops, I missed it. Grab it. Drop and hit. Drop and hit. Go get it. Okay. Good. Good. Keep going. Good. It's all right. It's all right. rush to do things, okay? When you're learning skills, no, you're not going to get paid big money for this. Take the time to do it right. That's why when we, the real game of handball is played by hitting the ball on one bat or hitting the ball in the air. But I'm a heck of a guy. So what I'm going to let you do is play infinity bounce. I'd rather see you do it right than worry about hitting it on one bounce. So what we're going to do is we're going to play infinity bounce. 
when you get good, which won't take long, it looks like we have some good athletes in here, then we're going to play two bouts. Then not too long after that, you're going to be playing one bout, probably even today. But remember, you, everybody here is going to be probably teaching PE at maybe an elementary school. Okay? They're not going to be as athletically powerful as you are. So be prepared to play big ball, big handball, big slow ball on a small court. As the skills develop, the ball gets smaller and the court gets bigger. Okay, so if I if I have an eight year old and I roll out a goal, uh, do you have a small ball, Joel? If I roll this ball out, this is the ball that I play with. If I roll this ball out for an eight year old, that eight year old will not be very successful. I want him or her to be successful. So what I do is I have them play with a bigger ball, a lower bounce ball, closer to the front wall. As their skills develop, the ball gets smaller and they get further away from the wall. So that's what we're talking about with maximum success. They can be more successful here with a small, big ball than they can be with a smaller ball way back here. All right, so Joel, you want to grab a few of the students and run through some quick skills? And uh, I'm going to grab the rest. And let's line up and... Um, let me have about 10 on this black line. Andrew, you tape him and I'll tape the other guy. Thank you. Yeah, it, if you have been, if you've been here this morning, you go with him. Okay. I can handle them all over here. You can? I can handle them all over here. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know what he's doing. I think might be doing the we'll see if we're doing the circle drill. So we're alternating oh. like you're rotating the volleyball. So nobody's standing around. Good. Good. And normally I if we're doing four, then two are retrieving. And when they miss here, then they come in and the people of NIST go back and they become, become retrievers. So I have six or eight per cord. I mean. You also call that a butterfly drill. Butterfly drill, okay. Sometimes I'll rotate them in on the side, so they will change the teams each time. Mm, yes. If you get within this range, this is for points. They get points are closest to the target. Oh. So this developing skills plus the movement and everything at the same I see. time. I see. Plus it makes it a little uh, more it's competitive they want to do. Right, they want to do it. And I, I do usually the softball or baseball box the pitching thing. Oh yeah. So it's giving them something they can relate to. Right. All right, are you ready? Oh, Joe! I need yards.
couple things I didn't go over for the benefit of those that missed the first class is we're going to is you want to get sideways, okay? When you're hitting the ball with your favorite hand, in my case it's my right hand, I want my belly button facing that wall. I don't want my belly button facing the front wall to hit it because I don't get any rotation. The power that you get is in the weight transfer from the back foot to the front foot and in the rotation of your head. Okay? That's where your power comes, and it comes from both sides. Weight back, step to the front foot, move the curtain out of the way, leap at the elbow, flex to extend, like we're punching somebody. Center of the body is your release point. It's also your point of contact. Follow through, keep your head down. I was here at 7.30 this morning. This wall was there. It's not going anywhere. Don't be looking at the wall. Watch the ball. If you, if you don't hit the ball correctly, ask yourself, where was my head? If my head goes anywhere, it goes down. That's an hour's worth of information I just gave you. <laughs> All right, ready? with me. 
my guards. I'm going to my guards. Okay? Two. One more thing. I hate that. <laughs> All right, this game is called rotation. Again, in the real world, in physical education classes, you want your students to be busy doing things. So, I'm not going to do it today for you, but these could be stations. One station here could be jumping rope, one station could be doing sit-ups, one station could be doing push-ups. These can all be stations with the kids doing something. We're going to play, and we're going to keep the ball in play until one of us misses. When one of us misses, the person moves off of the court, onto the end of the line, next person comes on the court, and we play again. shaking hands. If you hear a loud slap, it's usually followed by ow. Okay? Yes. Think of that. Slap, ow. <laughs> okay? Try to make the ball quiet when you hit it. Alright, let's go. You need goggles. You need to get you some goggles. Next.
them, it better not get by you. The other is that you are getting the same king court. Uh, like king of the hill. Uh -huh. So it's uh, two against one. So one person's going to serve, and then two people will be back, and either one of you can return it. So you return it, she returns it, you return it. This is where you got to communicate. I got it, you got it. You talk to each other. Uh, when she misses and she goes out to the end of the line, uh, people rotate in there. We'll do it that way. Just keep track of your own points. Just if you don't have singles, you can play doubles, or just three odd number, you can get a good workout with just three people playing. So once you start serving, let's everybody else come on the back. Come out.
So the team that hits the ball with a higher percentage of shots, they mainly the dominant hand is going to win. You know, you're not going to win any games hitting everything with your off hand. So you, that's where you communicate. Okay, let's play. Put your name and email address on there, and then come join the group. Still got one more serve coming. So we're going to try and get over the line. I'll go get another. This one. Oh, on the four? You want me to go back over there? Right here is fine. One more chance. Two chances. Get on the green line. Stand up here. This is the line. You've got to get it Yeah, one 
thing, that was almost to scream off. I served on those between my legs, and they can't see it. They have to have a fair shot at the ball, so it's a replay. They're hitting hard. We need to have the goggles in. Keep 
keep scoring. Okay? As soon as you knock them out and you come in to serve, then you'll start scoring assuming you win the round. Yeah. You continue, you continue like, to score? Now, let's just say we score like, we won, like three in a row, and you get knocked off. No, in this particular win. game, you're, 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 that's a good interpretation because that's the way we did it earlier. But in a, we're playing like a real tournament now. You can stay in as long as you keep winning. Okay. okay. So only, restarts. only the server scores. So points start over whenever? No, they don't. You keep. So let's say you scored three points. Uh -huh. You take those three points with you. Next time you come in, you got three points. All right. Okay. So, and we score if you get three points. Yes. Say again. No, only score if the service scores. Oh yeah, you can only score part with your service. Like tennis. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll start over. Yeah. How many points you got? Eight, eight. eight points? You got zero? How many points you got? We're stopping at eight points. Oh, okay. So we got the point. Y'all back there. Next group moves up, let's go. If you get eight points, we're going to rotate out. Y'all are eight right now. Gary, this is the young man that taught last year. This is Brian. We're going to on YouTube. Well, that was quick. So what I'll do is after 10 minutes, we'll, we'll have three winners, and then we'll do some sort of an event here, pull off uh, a wild card playoff, so we'll have four teams, and then I'll show, I'll show them how it's done in a bracket, so then we'll have a little, 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 little championship. It looks like they have a good time. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Well, the key is to break it into as small a group as possible. They're having more fun now when they were all than when all, they were all in the same court. Oh yeah. It's all about hitting the ball. Yes, Everybody it is. wants to hit a ball. Oh sure. <laughs> What is he explaining to them? Getting the ball off the court. Like here you can go out and retrieve the court. Like in tennis. And when oh. I do my serve, I'll do a long serve and put them way back against the fence. Right. right. It's hitting it right there that yeah. I... Well, you just, it's just watching, like, catching a ball like this. You just catch a ball like this. You do that if you just catch it. That's where he fits, right in that spot. That's the guy for my softball player. Got a couple baseball players, a couple basketball players playing. That's it. So you can hit a rock as long as I catch it right in that spot. That's what I'm hitting it. I'm not hitting it out here, here, here. Each where time. exactly on the hand? Right there. Base okay, of the two fingers, right there. I see. Good. 
gonna be a pro suit hunter. Woo! Okay. Hunter's pretty good at this. Yeah, that's that's the guy that lost. I mean, taught the class last semester, last year, and he, they saw him on YouTube teaching. That's what Rob. So, but he's a year ahead of you guys. I watched him. I played him in racquetball. You see him juggle? Yeah. You watch it. He's really, he can juggle the juggling thing. I played my hardest in four times. You did. You were playing your heart out for four times. I think we know who's king of the court right here. Yeah, I think we know who's king of the court. Yeah. But that has to do with experience. Uh -huh. The first one was the strongest hand. Not the left hand. Yeah. Hey, Mark, you shot right. Good hits. Okay. I'll take this point and count off how many good hits. The team with the most good hits is our wild card team. All right. Okay. Are we set? <laughs> okay. uh, Andrew, oh, let me let me take because I've got, you count off how many good hits they have over there, and I'll turn this off. Okay, so you're gonna count the hits. Andrew, over there. Andrew is gonna count over there. All right. Seconds. Yeah. Okay.
And that we'll have anybody that comes that didn't make it, that it wasn't their conference champion, we'll have wild cards. We'll pull somebody that shows up as wild cards. Good, good. And then you'll share how your conference is going, how you communicated. Uh, difficulty from how you put the So we got to throw some truths out there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I mean, I think everybody's, everything, everybody's had probably the same, the same troubles and whatnot. But. Well, you're forgiving yeah. administrators, so of course you have lots of communication issues. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know, I did really well. I was, I was really happy. Three. Three. You got it. You got to serve the not in the playoffs. Serve the score. I think everybody's just scared to put the new hot. Everybody's just scared. I mean, I know AJ is. Everybody I know AJ is scared. Give him plenty of room. Yeah. No, it's game. championship. Baseball players in my class. Of course, basketball beat the others, so but it's good competition. For yes, it is. Oh, out, 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 out,
Some of your students would be interested in doing this. Maybe we can maybe get down there and play some of this little handball at the park. 
maybe we can get a boys and girls club or a youth service or a high school or something to come down and you can work with them. That might be a good project for you. I don't know how far that could go. All I'm saying is that, is that might be available to you. But it's a, it's a very nice court and it's a one wall court. And I understand they, they have three, two other parks where they have the same situation. And um, on a nice sunny day, there's nothing quite like playing outdoor handball uh, on a nice court. Today, uh, at about two or so, Joel and I are gonna be hanging around. We're gonna, if anybody wants to play some four wall handball, we'll play some four wall handball with you. Uh, Joel is bringing some gloves. When you play four wall handball, you play it with a smaller ball, and you wear gloves. Why do you, why do you wear gloves? Any idea? You sweat, your hands sweat. You cheated, you were here this morning. People think you put gloves on because it protects your hands. Somebody besides you answer, <laughs> what protects your hands? Everything that we talked about this morning, we did, we kind of shortchanged this later group. Everything that we talked about, which is, starts with foot, your footwork, okay? You always keep your feet moving, you're always moving. Make things happen, don't let have things happen to you. This ball is not very smart. I think I'm smarter than this ball, but every time this ball moves, and I don't move, this ball gets smarter and I get dumber. You've got to move, you've got to move your feet. Okay, but if you do everything, if your weight is back, if your arm is up and high, if your lead arm is up, if you step with your front foot and you pretend there's a curtain in front of you and you move that curtain out of the way to expose that new car that's behind that curtain, and you start your swing with your elbow first, and you extend and you hit the ball at your point of contact, which by the way is the same as your release point when you're throwing it, if you keep your head down and you rotate with that back foot, it thus rotates your hips, and you follow through, you can hit a rock and it won't hurt. But for every step that you miss, that's when it hurts, okay? So for instance, let's say my weight is forward when I hit the ball. Now all I'm doing is using my arm instead of this great big body, okay? Let's say instead of having my lead arm up, it's resting on my front leg. Okay? I'm not going to be able to get the rotation that I do if my lead arm is out of the way. So this clears your path for you. Okay? Let's say instead of leading with the elbow like I'm hammering a nail, let's say I lead with my hand. My hand is ahead of my elbow. I'm not able to get anything in my hand. Oh, my hand is taking everything. Let's say instead of hitting it with a cupped hand, I hit it with a flat hand. All those are steps that lead to it hurting. If you do them all correctly, and nobody does, it won't hurt, and you will have much more control with the ball. It's played with both sides of the body. I know most people don't like using their non-favorite hand, but the more you use it, on the professional level, you can't tell whether a person is right-handed or left-handed. They use both hands. So somebody mentioned it today, can I go off the court to hit the ball? Absolutely. That's one of the reasons that I prefer to teach four-wall handball, so you can't do that. I'd rather not see, especially in doubles, so I've seen, I've seen four-wall handball players, especially some left-handers, that'll bring a chainsaw with them to cut a hole in the wall so they can get out of the court to put their left, their big left on. In other words, uh, four-wall handball, you're not, you're not allowed to, to, to use, to focus on only your strong hand, because I'm going to keep you in the, in the part of the court that only you use your left hand or your non-favorite hand. Um, any, do I, anybody have any questions? If you're going to hang around, we'll be on the four-wall court. Um, like I said, I don't know where that court at, uh, at uh, Gerard Park will materialize, but I think it's a great opportunity. We also have some local handball players here at Ridge, which is right down the street. I'm in contact with them. They would love you to go over there and play handball with them. I'm sure we can come and get you a pass. <laughs> uh, we're a community. Handball is a community. Wherever I travel in the country, I tell them I'm playing handball. Somebody will say, come on over. Okay. We're very small. Uh, there's a book out now called The Blue Zones. It talks about the people that live to be past 100 years of, old, of age and what keeps them going. And one of the things that keeps them going is a sense of community. It's good to be a part of something. Joel and I are part of the handball community and we're proud of that. 
you too, you know, if you decide to, to take that game up, uh, I'm going to keep talking until you get up to leave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will, I will. Handball is a lifetime sport, maybe another lifetime sport. <laughs> Golf. Oh. Bigger ball. Golf. Tennis. Tennis. Swimming. Archery. Racquetball. A lot of lifetime sports. When Softball. When you are your age, you don't realize the importance of a lifetime sport. When you get to be, right now, your age, you've got probably uh, 500 friends. You've got a lot of people to do stuff with. Wait till you're 30. <laughs> That's true. All right, everybody, I'll see you in the four wall courts. Thanks for your attention. Good job today. Thank you.